So being able to create training sets when you know how music and sound actually works in real life is, is very important because like the engineers who makes training sets, I've seen training sets recorded in a 32-bit 16 kilohertz, you know, a, a noise set, which is just a, like a super weird. Peter Jorgensen have created two amazing companies, Soundly and Hands.ai. He works in the intersection between music, film, sound design, and he's created some really healthy, good businesses. It's an interesting story. Hope you like it. Hey guys, and welcome to Sound Connections. Today we have a guest called Peter Jorgensen from Hands.ai. Hey, thanks for having me on, uh, Jacob. Sure. <clears throat> I didn't know about Hans. So uh, you have a colleague that reached out to me and just say, hey, uh, I listened to your podcast. I think this is really cool. Um, we have this company called Hans AI in Norway that does some pretty crazy stuff with audio. And that sort of sparked my interest. I have a background uh, in audio engineering and production. And as a startup guy, uh, seeing other people doing something in this space is quite interesting. Peter, it's going to be about you mm. and your founder's journey today, but also about Hans. But before we get into you, can you just explain to me what is Hans.ai? Yeah, we do machine learning on audio, basically, uh, audio improvement. Uh, we are really far ahead, actually, in Oslo. We're very much under the radar in what we yeah. do. As you said, you've never heard about us. Uh, but what we do is super advanced. So we do machine learning on edge, which means on like, hardware devices, which are quite limited. So we can do noise reduction, stem separation, and, and things like that. Um, and everything's written uh, from the ground up. And we started before machine learning or AI was cool. So we started building the company in 2020-ish. Um, and uh, yeah. And you obviously have had a journey to get to there. And, and we'll, we'll, before we go into Hansi and I and more, because I've I've tried some uh, some of your products, so I've tried you know uh, a product that uses your product, and it's quite impressive. Um, but we'll talk about you first because you have a background in music and technology and programming. Like, how did he end up here? Yeah, that's a good uh, question. So um, my background is actually in music. So I started out um, as a musician in back in the days and got more and more into music production and and things like that. So. I studied in Liverpool back in 2003, um, music production uh, at school called Lippe over there, um, which was a lot of fun. And I got to work with some really good artists that, that uh, like, uh, when we left school, started doing it pretty well. Uh, I moved back to Oslo and uh, started doing a lot of music production here in Oslo. I so had a studio down in the city center. And 2006-ish to 2008-ish was like an interesting time, I guess, in the music industry because no one was buying CDs anymore and Spotify had kind of launched, but it wasn't that big yet. And no one was really buying like digital music on Apple Music. So like there wasn't any real economy in the music business, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if you can yeah. remember this far uh, back, Jakob, but, but it was like, it's a weird time to like, leave uni and try to start working with music um but it was a lot imagine. of fun because there's a lot of, in oslo back then lots of great musicians lots of passion so i uh, was involved with some really cool projects and had lots of like songs on the radio and things like that but uh it wasn't like uh, very good economically to, to to be doing music production back then at no. least which probably is like that today as well it's a lot of competition but it's it's probably better a lot of fun it's not like well, amazing yeah, yeah. It's not amazing. Yeah. Um, so I also started programming. Um, so I just, I'm just a self-taught programmer. I've always been like fascinated with computers growing up uh, and, and writing like small programs on Commodore 64s and, and things like that. And in 2008, I just sat down and thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to learn programming because it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, and you can do so much cool stuff. People have started the iPhone came out and people started making like iPhone apps and there was just lots of cool ideas floating around on the internet uh, and like the big hurdle to get over was programming basically so back then at least um, if you're gonna like set up a company you needed a, you kind of needed an idea guy and then you needed like a team of developers to do it so I just thought if I can learn to program maybe I can just skip that step and just start making 
making stuff. Um, so I sat down uh, in 2008 and just started programming Python to see if I could do it. And then like I, I thought it was a lot of fun and like I made a game, a uh, super small game and released it on like a forum where I used to frequent. It's called Freak Forum. It's like a forum in Norway. And <clears throat> back then when you like worked on a, a song with a band, you released it. Maybe you got like a hundred uh, like plays on uh, MySpace. You know, it wasn't like uh, a big thing. It was hard to get like attention on stuff um, because there wa- wasn't weren't any like easy platforms to to get music out there. Uh, but with like programming, I just made a small game, released it on the internet, and got so much feedback. So I just thought, wow, this is a much cooler thing to do because the stuff you do gets much more broad attention, uh, which is fun. So. I went from there. You can just stop me and ask me questions if there is. No, but this else, is great. Just, just continue. I'm just listening. <clears throat> so um, uh, after that, I actually made an iPhone app uh, called iTrust uh, because I kind of want to learn the frameworks on how stuff works in the iPhone universe, uh, and that was a big success. Uh, <laughs> iTrust is like an app that lets you see if other people are snooping on your phone. So you, you just like put your phone on the table and forget to lock it. And then if someone starts pushing buttons, then it will save a log of like what's been pushed. And then you can have a look at the log when you come back from the toilet. So we made a fun ad for it, like me and a couple of friends and just got the app into the app store. And it was like, a, back then, like there was a saying, oh, there's an app for that. And people were writing a lot about apps in like the, the papers and stuff like that. So. It got really popular, and like the video had like five hundred thousand views on YouTube, and, and people were buying it a lot. But it kind of felt it it was a project to learn programming for iPhones, and like the idea felt a bit cheap in a way. Yeah. So I never wasn't very proud of it. I kind of just let it die from there. Um, but uh, like I could really see how easy it was to get from an idea to a popular product, as long as you know how to do programming. Um, so from there I just kept on creating stuff another really cool thing I made was um, I was working with a band over here uh, called Team Me which is like an indie band were very popular around I guess 2010 so instead of making a music video I sat down and programmed a music video game in Flash which was like a popular uh, developer tool thing back then that could run in any browser so I made a music video game in like an 8-bit style and all this was kind of new back then. Uh, and that got really popular. It had like 2 million plays uh, around the oh. internet and and lots of people completed it and like tens of thousands of comments uh, and things like that. So I, yeah, so I just felt really at home in like being somewhere in between uh, programming, music and art. Yeah. Uh, and I've kind of kept on doing things related to to that, another cool project uh, we made back in 2015, which might be worth checking out, is called Inspirobot, inspirobot.me, which is a website that generates an unlimited amount of inspirational quotes on pictures, like the stuff your aunt would post on Facebook, basically. <laughs> like, yeah, sees the day and then a picture of a blue sky. But it, it's auto-generated. This was long before AI, in a way, so it's like a very complex product of stitching together the sentences that kind of make sense and putting them on images, and it, it's a lot of fun, and it's also been, like, hugely popular. It's uh, has its own, like, Reddit groups, which are constantly active with, like, thousands of people voting pictures up and down, and it's, like, still going really strong, so... But we're very, like, anonymous in, in making it, but it's, it's actually... Yeah, it's fun to just create something and then just let it live on the internet and see that it kind of just lives on and lives through the purpose and we put in like super small easter eggs if you click a lot of times then you might get a weird thing and people start talking about that then yeah you can like put things into into it so <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, yeah I'm gonna start talking about hands soon there are a couple of other projects yeah because I, um, you know after all these yeah. kind of things you created a product that basically is a, is a really well running business today that I guess you sort of base your commercial founder career on, and that is Soundly. yeah, that's Soundly. Yes, yeah, Soundly. Yeah. So um, Soundly is um, so my background was in music, but it's kind of hard to make money uh, doing just music. So I started doing 
more and more uh, music for advertising and uh, doing that I also started doing sound design which I found super interesting and you I think Jacob know very well what sound design is but to most people they don't realize that on a Hollywood film like every sound is layered afterwards nothing is basically recorded on set uh, so and sound design is a very interesting thing to do because you can make a scene come alive with just adding lots of sound and there's a lot of creativity like blended into it and it's just I especially like working with animations that has no sound and then you kind of just start layering sounds and I like the feeling when you start buying or you start accepting that what you hear and what you see are combined even though it's just sounds from one universe and then animation from another so sound design is kind of coming up with cool sounds to create emotions when you watch something yeah Um, so I started doing more and more sound design and started working for a sound design company and had a lot of fun doing like mostly ads and, and things like that. And I needed a tool myself to find sound effects quickly and get them into the mix. Uh, and this was, I guess, back in 2012. This was really hard. People were still buying CDs with uh, sound effects. Uh, and there wasn't like any subscriptions, nothing. You had to pay a lot of money to get like a good sound library. And then you couldn't really search it in any easy way or find the right to like had to open the catalog and, and so it's really like old fashioned the whole system so uh, I had a look at Spotify and just thought hmm it should be able to do something like them where you have a big sound library in the cloud you have a local application that connects to whatever applications you're using so I created Soundlit to use it myself first and uh, got in all the functionality I needed and then I kind of started to spread around Oslo uh, different sound designers started using it and in 2015 I also got a good sound library on board uh, my colleague Christian uh, he's a renowned sound designer from uh, both Hollywood and worked a lot in on like the big movies in Norwegian he has he had a big sound library so we kind of combined forces and created the company's sound and it's totally bootstrapped we never had any investors um, but we just like build it brick from brick and it's uh, luckily gone really well uh, so now we're a company of I think we're something like eight ten employees here in um, Sagwe in, in Oslo and we have lots of freelancers and doing lots of new projects in the soundly project all the time so yeah. it's a local application that connects to all the popular audio and video editors and lets you get sound into them quickly um, so <clears throat> from there uh, in 2020 um, just before corona like a uh, a couple of weeks before it hit, uh, we went to NAM, which is a music um, messe. Uh, it's not called messe in English. It's conference. called... Uh, yeah, conference, trade show. Uh, and met another Norwegian who was doing sound and programming, which is kind of uh, not something you do every day because there aren't that many people in Oslo who does sound and programming. Uh, and his name was Stian, and he's from a company called Akon Digital. Uh, and we checked out his products and they were really good like the programming quality or his understanding of DSP was super far ahead of anyone else so he was he, he makes plugins for audio applications uh, which are highly regarded and, and used in like Hollywood so if someone has to alter like the voice of an actor they can use his plugins to do that uh, easily and then they're very popular if you need to add like a reverb or an echo to a voice he has plugins that does that really well so we thought hmm this machine learning thing which is kind of starting to, to take off a bit or very little in 2020 but still there's something there maybe we should start looking into it because I think at some point we'll need this stuff in Soundlin you'll probably need it in Akon as well so we founded a company between us called Hans uh, where Soundly, uh, where I work, has a big sound library and a lot of technology that can be used. And he has a very deep understanding of uh, signal processing. Um, so we combined forces and started making products from day one, really. Again, super bootstrapped. We just thought we'd see what we could make. And the first uh, model that we made, so we wrote everything from scratch, basically. So back in 2020, all machine learning stuff was made for uh, images. So image recognition and stuff like that was kind of, you tried to use it on audio, but it didn't really work because there is some overlap, but it's really slow to do it that way. So we started building it 
for audio from scratch, which was really smart, I think. Yeah. Uh, and we released, uh, again, a plugin uh, based on machine learning, which removes noise from dialogue. I mean, these days, everyone is removing noise from, from vocals, but back then, not very many people were doing it. So we released, a, again, a plugin called Extract Dialogue, which became super popular instantly because finally you had something that could just run on your device uh, in an um, audio or video editor. And it, it's been used a lot in like Hollywood and like big films. If you see like a film, chances are they've used hand technology to enhance the audio or remove noise. So we went from there uh, to started creating building the company more uh, and figuring out what we actually want to do and we found that the stuff we're making it works really well and it runs on super light uh, weight hardware so maybe we should start licensing the models out to hardware vendors and then we got Jota on board who contacted you uh, yeah. who is um, he's more of a businessman than us we, we're more just we create stuff and just see what sticks if that makes sense but he's much more organized and really good at building companies and we're so happy to have him on board. So he's the new CEO of Hans. He was hired uh, two weeks ago or something like that. So I'm stepping up down. I've been like the CEO there for a couple of years. Uh, so that's where we're right now. It's a very interesting journey. And when I hear you speak, you know, it obviously sounds like, oh, it's just been a dream. And But, but I know being a founder and building stuff, there's a lot of downsides as well. Can, can you walk through what, what is it that has been difficult about this journey as well? It's uh, it's <laughs> it's been a lot of work. Uh, uh, so the most difficult thing has been time, at least for the last few years. Uh, I would say where there are lots of projects I want to do, uh, and but it's hard to to find the time to do all of them, uh, and then combine, combining like. All the sound work with all the hands work with with all the stuff can be quite challenging. But I saying that I think I've been quite lucky because I'm lucky enough to be able to work with stuff that I really enjoy and jump on new projects when I see something interesting. So I just feel every day I wake up and just feel super lucky that I can just okay today I want to program and suddenly I want to create this feature and I can sit down and do that and then the next day I might want to try to experiment with a new training set uh, for hands and then I can kind of just do that. So. I have to say it hasn't been that <laughs> difficult. It, it's taken a lot of time and I've had like, uh, I had a full-time job um, until 20, well, I guess 2019 or something like that. Like I had a full-time job on the side uh, mm-hmm. while doing all the other stuff. But it's, I don't know, from like, I feel, I, so say 10 years ago, I would sit in the studio for 12 hours a day uh, doing music and, um, and that you kind of get into like the vibe of just working a lot in a way. So I just kind of took that with me and the programming and all the other stuff. So just you kind of just used to working a lot, and then it's it's not that bad. I, I should probably have said something. Uh, no, 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 it's super fine. Super hard, but it's been quite okay actually. <laughs> it's fine. I'm kind of curious because you know what one of the things that I do here over and over again in the music industry is these kind of like way too difficult founder journeys. And when you talk about yours. I obviously have an understanding it's difficult and working hard is also difficult. But it might be because you're not really working in the music industry per se. You're working in the intersection between music and film. A synchronization, if you will, or sound design. It, do, do you have a sense that that is a more um, stable, sensible, lucrative place to be than just purely music? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, because that's exactly what I I've forgotten about it. No, but that's something I started thinking about. Because are you familiar with Gearspace the forum? Yeah, I haven't used it for many years, but I am familiar. Yes. Yeah, uh, or Gear Sluts, as it was called uh, back in the day. They changed the name. Um, because I remember reading. Because say you're thinking about buying this Newman Neumann mic, right? KM eighty four or something. And then I go on there and you start reading about them. And there's so many opinions. And it's like, so at some point it gets obvious that there's a lot of like musicians who are like amateurs. They're not really making a living of it. They're just like very opinionated and have a lot of opinion on it. And then on the same forum, there's some like uh, sound design talk and stuff like that. And it's quite obvious. These are professionals. All of them are actually working and making a living doing this. So I kind of started thinking the same thing. It looks like 
people actually have like real jobs in sound design where they come in at nine and, and leave at five. While in the music business is kind of you, you come in at eleven and then you you're home at four in the morning. Uh, if that makes sense. So it's yeah. uh, and that's uh, what I've found as well that in the intersection between sound and film, it's a much more stable like economy and much more stable jobs. But like in the hardcore like music production field, for example, it's it's not like any like steady jobs. It's everyone's like doing freelance work, and you always have to like Good. find the next job, I guess. So so that's a yeah. So I think I've been lucky being more in the stable film uh, than just like the hardcore music stuff. Yeah, it's just an interesting observation because one of the things that I'm very hopeful for is the music industry over time will become a better place, a better environment to have a career. But but film, in some degree, is so many years ahead of the music industry and in the way that it's commercialized itself and also the market it addresses, and there's a lot more money in it. I, I recently had an interview with, with, a, with a podcast guest. Uh, actually, I think it's two episodes before you with Shane Shapiro. That, and he says that he really believes that the music industry over time will be worth three, four, five times what it is now when it comes to revenue and stuff. And hopefully it will come to that point. But... Obviously, th- this podcast is for entrepreneurs, so I, w- I do want to dwell a bit on this space because it's for entrepreneurs in the music industry, but the music industry does also co- cover your area. Do, do you feel like it's it's a hard space to carve a business in? Like, w- what's the competition space in this intersection? What's your sense of the industry? Now, are you thinking about the music industry more? No, the, in... the, the, the intersection that you're working with between, you know, music and, and film. Yeah, I think um, it's... I'm a fan of small niches because it's so much. If you're, if you're in a small niche, it, it's it's easier to be be like a big fish in a small pond uh, than a small fish in a big pond, I guess. Mm. Uh, and I've always been a fan of like finding, I don't know why, but just like finding small niches that you can become good at instead of trying to like take over the world with something. Uh, but that's just like my philosophy or where I come from because I see it's it's easier. So in the sound. In the music space, say you're making plugins, effects uh, that people can purchase. The competition is so hard because there are so many people doing it because music is a passion product for uh, a lot of people. So, so just the idea of having a job in the music industry is is uh, super like high up there and a lot of people want to do it. But in like the intersection between film and sound, uh, it's a lot of passion, but it's it's more of like a job. Uh, in a way, which means that there are less people doing the same thing. So if you have like a lot of passion for what you're doing and you you think you can create projects, it, good products, it's it's much easier to to get ahead. And people are also out looking for better ways to do what they do. Um, so I would definitely say that uh, it's an easier area to be in than just like the music. But mm. on the other side, the music side is much bigger. So I, I'd say like the sound design side is 10%, 5% maybe of like, maybe 5% of like the music industry. But if you hit it big in music, then you're big uh, in a way. Like say Waves plugins, for example. They're like super popular and they're making a lot more money than if they were just in like the sound design community. But then mm-hmm. again, there are so many small fish trying to jump up that you always have to stay ahead of competition. Yeah, we that also, make sense? Yeah, absolutely it does. It does. We have also had Hannes Andersson from Oic Sound on the podcast, and they've done the same, like found a small niche, but they're definitely more on the music side. And and I also know that that they're doing well uh, because they, they're playing in a bigger market than just, you know. It's interesting, but but what's your outlook with Hans? Let's, let's go to Hans a bit, uh, because Sally, Sally was, was uh, successful. Uh, in, a, in a healthy company, he found his partner from Akon that you know was also successful in his own right. You create this company together, and you create some technology that's really interesting. Where are you going with it? What do you want to do? Yeah, so enhance we we want to enhance the world. <laughs> We're kind of working on a slogan uh, right now. See what we can come up with. But we are very much dedicated to doing machine learning uh, on device. Uh, but with a quality as good as it would be in the cloud. Because most machine learning or AI companies these days, they're just getting models off the shelf, basically, or off the shelf components, put them together. They need to run it in the cloud. It's like super inefficient and super big. And then you can do stuff, but it takes a lot of CPU power to do it, basically. We're just trying to make this 
uh, simple and usable. Uh, and we've created like the most amazing product we've created probably uh, is st live stem separation. So stem separation is about pulling elements of a music mix out uh, and, and then doing stuff with it. So we've created a plugin which runs in real time on any computer, even like on a Raspberry Pi, that can, for example, remove the vocals from a song. Um, and stem separation is something that's been around for, I guess, four years or something, which was quite amazing when it came out because uh, with the music background we have, Jacob, we know that the mix is a mix. You can't really do anything to it when it's mixed. But then suddenly you can start with machine learning pulling just the vocals out of a mix again, which is just, it's crazy listening to Freddie Mercury in solo, for example. You've probably done that as well. Um, but yeah, we got this running uh, on device. So we've had uh, in the studio where I'm sitting now, it's one of the Soundless studios, we've had a couple of like karaoke parties, basically, where we just open Spotify uh, or Apple Music, which has lyrics, and then run it uh, through or uh, stem, live stem separation, and then can do karaoke on any song. And it's been like, we were amazed ourselves when we actually started using this uh, as just like a karaoke thing, and everyone just loved it. Like, people wouldn't go out to the studio to just stay here and just do karaoke to like weird Norwegian songs that doesn't have a karaoke version. And wow. So so <clears throat> I'm in, enhanced with doing lots of different projects, but right now I'm I'm really trying to get some hardware vendors on board to create like the perfect hardware karaoke box which can just run on Apple Music or Spotify, whatever you you'd like. That's but, amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but that's sort of so so you have this underlying technology that can do some cool stuff and then you try to productize it and commercialize it. That's right, yeah. So Right now we're in like the commercialization bit, <clears throat> and Jota is doing a fantastic job, the CEO there. So we have uh, meetings with lots of like big um, players in the industry, in both the hardware and the software industry, and 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 trying to get the word out that this stuff is actually possible, and we can deliver the technology behind it that that makes it possible. So and every week when we have our meeting, it's like always something new. We've discovered something new. We created, improved our models. Or we talk to new customers who are like have new ideas for where this could go. So it's, I really like the, in in like the industry of machine learning and audio right now. It's there's so many cool new ideas floating around, and we can just jump on them and try them out. And and I really like being in a place where there's like it, it's going really quickly, but you can also like stay out of the game and like keep trying just cool stuff. Yeah. And I would say our background, this is. Jakob, you, you, you have uh, talked about uh, machine learning a lot, but our musical background is actually quite important because uh, the big companies have a lot of engineering, like hardcore DSP engineering, digital signal processing engineering, but they don't really understand music or sound that well. So being able to create training sets when you know how music and sound actually works in real life is, is very important because like the engineers who makes training sets I've seen training sets recorded in uh, 32 bit 16 kilohertz you know a, a noise set uh, which is just uh, like a super weird uh, you probably understand Jacob that that's just like a super weird format but if you don't understand music then you think that's a good idea for some reason so so there's something really strong to be said about having the um, experience in, mm -hmm. in like just general audio when yeah. working in this Klondike you world we're in right now where everything is kind of possible when i hear your journey uh it strikes me as quality product first and then reaction later like it seems like okay i made something cool put it into it there was a reaction i made something cool put it into its reaction i made a machine learning uh hardware device thing and we commercialized it later and it's a really cool way of doing it because a lot of founders sort of go the other way around it's like okay we want to do this and they're all about building towards that and then it's a difficult way to do it, uh, and and you've done it, uh, I would say, textbook the right way, um, but that's not always a luxury. But I think it really stems from you going back to say, okay, I want to have the shortest way possible between my idea to actually having a product by doing this programming yourself. Is that how you also read it? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, um, uh, yeah, I think it comes from like just being able to create something yourself instead of relying on a lot of other people. 
you kind of quickly learn that it's better to just build a product and get it out there than trying to get the team to build a product and then the product does and then sometimes it fails, sometimes it goes well. So it's just, I guess this has been discussed a lot as well, how long you should spend on the prototype and things like that. But both me and Stian, uh, the other guy in Hans, who's, who's like the smart guy over here, I'm just doing training sets. Yes. Um, <laughs> He is also the same like bootstrapped idea of making good products, uh, sell them, make sure they work before you like try to go big uh, Boom. in uh, the universe. So, so we're very aligned. Uh, while Jota on the other side, he's a bit more, let's just uh, focus on something, get money in and then just like build it. And it's kind of, but I think there's a combination here, which I used to be very much like everything should be bootstrapped and like... Um, you should have a product before you go out for investors and things like that. But I'm starting to see that I think like I think there's like a hybrid approach, which is probably the best way to do things, which is to be able to build something yourself to a point where you figure out, okay, we need to get more people on board and then get people like Jot on board to help just build a company much quicker with like funding. Uh, so uh, that's what I've learned from my experience so far at least. Yeah, it's definitely, I, I, I personally... Um... I pr- I come from like let's sell the idea first and then build it later, but and that that that's that's not always turn out well, and I'm definitely trying to meet more the middle. I'm trying to feed people, you know, meet people that are more like you that I can combine with because I'm a storyteller, right? So so my my skill sets are probably closer to youths, and um, and that is also super important. But it needs to be with that practical aspect. Like let's let's also just build a great great product. And I really also, th- I think it speaks to the necessity for founders to have other people that has other skill sets that can do great things. And you you and your first partner can build great things. Then his role is coming in and sell it, uh, telling the story, scaling it, creating possibilities that you guys m- maybe wouldn't be able to do. Um, but but your journey as a, you know, soundly, let's go a bit back to that because uh, you are still CEO of that company. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> so, my I, my passion is both very much in Soundly and in the Hans uh, company. Uh, but I've been working at S- Soundly is a super fun place to work, <laughs> basically. And we've just built it brick by brick with hiring friends, basically. So we're just a, a bunch of friends sitting out here uh, doing stuff we really like doing. So... Uh, we uh, spend a lot of money on just making silly ads because we think it's funny. Uh, so we have like a big YouTube backlog uh, of, of just films we made uh, and we're producing lots of other new films now. And we um, uh, are also innovating a lot, which is fun coming up with new ideas. And we have like a new big release coming in the not too distant future with some new stuff. So uh, I'm kind of juggling my life between like the hand stuff, which I think is a lot of fun, and also the sound list stuff, which is a lot of fun. So it's, uh, I guess it's a privileged place to be, but um, uh, I have done a lot of hands work uh, over the years. I, I'm just trying to answer the question in some way, but I, I've, I've got, I'm, my absolute, my biggest role and job is in the sound list company, because that's a lot of work, basically, yeah. to be a CEO in it, and we have a lot of stuff going on, and you need to hold all the threads. Yeah. Um, so it's like there I have some very like um, things structured things a lot of emails I need to do lots of meetings I need to have which are good meetings and fun meetings but still it's like enhance is a lot freer I can kind of just say okay I want to work on this for a while I want to see how this works and which like gives me a lot of like creative freedom to work on other stuff so I kind of like doing both things if that makes any sense yeah. but yeah my like biggest workload is by far in sound on a yeah. day to day basis yeah, but it seems basis. like there's a very clear synergy. So, you know, the, the work you do in Saudi probably translates very well into hands. But yeah, can, can I so ask we can you use as technology. A, mm. as a founder, you you have probably have some sort of visions for both Saudi and Hans. When it comes to when it comes to the companies, like Saudi, is that a company you just want to be profitable and live over a long time, or do you want to sell it? And sort of the same question for Hans. Like what's your exit goals or results you're looking for financially from both of those companies? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. I haven't thought uh, that much about it, to be honest. I kind of like, I, I really like working in, in Soundly. We were having a good time. Um, 
and it's uh, very much a passion project for everyone here. So it's for us, I, as long as we can just keep going and be profitable, I think we're quite happy uh, with where we're at. It would be interesting to work with some bigger uh, industry players as well. Maybe see if we could do sound design is kind of very niche. Is there like some a big market where you can also go in and work? Uh, and for the hands company, I think it's pretty much the same. We were having a lot of fun working on it, inventing new stuff. Like our main goal have never been like to make money. It's just been to see how far we can take machine learning in a way. And in my experience, it's like uh, often a good uh, when you're starting something. Uh, if the end goal is money, it it might not be that easy to 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 keep um, the passion going while you're working on it. But if the end goal is just to see uh, around the next turn, can we make this even better just because the users we have will think it's cool, then that's, it's easier to motivate you at every step. Mm-hmm. So we don't really have any long-term <laughs> goals in any of these companies. It's more just seeing what's around the next turn and, and just go with it if it works and then create new projects from that. So yeah, so hands in in a big part is just like going around the next turn and seeing what's there and then maybe going there maybe we should do some stem separation maybe we should have a karaoke party yeah that was really fun maybe we should make a karaoke box if you understand what I'm it, the, the, absolutely the road kind of comes as we're walking and I think it's also inspiring to hear like you know I I love the music industry and I love being a founder but but it also it can be quite depressing you know and I speak to a lot of the founders that are really passionate and you know just work and work for years but the, the, the truth of it it can, it can be quite depressing and one of one of the one of the uh, statements I get from a lot of guests is like they would not go into the music industry if they knew what was coming uh, and it's kind of beautiful also to hear a story from your mm-hmm. side where it's actually possible to thrive it's actually possible to have fun and have karaoke parties with your company and and, and do that and I think that's an important narrative as well like not because you know we assume just from this podcast your your life is you know a dream in all aspects, but it's it's good to say okay we can actually build healthy companies that do well, and and enjoy the journey, um, mm. and it, it also sounds like you just expect to you know work hard and and enjoy the journey moving forward. Mm. Yeah, abs- absolutely. My, my, yeah, so my like impression from founding things and, 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 and it's, it has been very p- positive but <laughs> I'm in a very lucky position where I can where this is my full time job uh, I, I don't need like investors coming in and, and things like that so I feel super lucky because I've had full time job on, jobs on the side always and it's, it's hard to manage that to, to create something on top of something you're doing uh, but yeah I just feel I feel super lucky to be in the position I'm, I'm in to be honest <laughs> mm. Well, I'm I'm very I'm very curious to follow hands and the technology and how it moves forward. And you guys have some if if people haven't seen it, you guys have an amazing advertising video on your website, hands that AI. That's just the first time I saw it. I was like, okay, well, I get it. I, I want to speak to these guys because that's quite impressive. And I've used some of your technology, and it's all quite impressive. And I really believe you guys are tapping into the right things. Is sort of taking these machine learning AI and just applying to things that needs change and improvement. And you're doing that pretty fast so I hope the best for your company I'm very happy you came on the podcast it's super inspiring to hear a positive story from a founder in the music industry and maybe it's because you're in the intersection between music and film <laughs> yeah, let's, <maybe. laughs> let's reflect on that take it in maybe it changed careers a bit no 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 but but uh, it, it's been a really good interview and I hope to meet you in person soon yeah sir if you're in Oslo come by the office we have a uh... Nice offices with nice lunches, so you'd be more than welcome, uh, Jacob. You can use me in one I, of your advertising videos. I'll, I'll try yeah, to do my best. So that advertising is like a product of all the stuff we do in Soundly, in a way. Yes, we, we've done a lot of videos over the years. Which, uh, but I just want to say that like the overlap between if anyone is like thinking about, okay, maybe we should look into like the film world a bit to see. There's like the overlap in what you do is very big and very broad. Yeah. So like it, it's not a very sh- long trip from like doing just music to doing like music and sound design is very connected the whole mm. thing in every way really so so I think maybe you're absolutely right the, the the intersection between film and sound might be easier than just music which is much harder and much more competition mm. so uh, if you can take something from that maybe it's worth looking into that direction as well I'll definitely it's been look- super 
good uh, being on. I, I feel I've just talked and talked. You should have stopped me it's more. It's the perfect and, and episode. More, but, mm. It's the perfect episode. I don't. It, the, the less I need to say, the better it is. I don't know. I don't know, Jacob. You just kept me going. But uh, but it was a lot of fun uh, being on and, and, and getting a chance to talk about this stuff, which I'm very passionate about, which you can probably. It shines true, I hope. Very clear. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Talk soon. Tusen Dank.